We want information. 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 Who are you? Taloo number two. Who is number one? You are number six. I am not a number. I'm a free man. <laughs> All right, what's up, dudes? And when I say dudes, I mean everyone. Today, what I'm going to be talking about is long distance driving tips. Long distance driving is not something you do on a mountain bike or a cyclocross bike. However, it is a thing you sometimes need to do or want to do to get to a riding destination, whether it be Pisgah or Bentonville or Moab or Sedona, whatever. Sometimes you need to get in a car with all your gear and drive there. Now, this is something that I have done a lot. Uh, I've been driving back and forth across the country since I was a teenager. Since before there were Starbucks at service plazas, which I think is insane now. People complain about Starbucks where in 1992, if you were driving across the country, the only coffee you were getting was at a gas station. It had been sitting in that pot all day long and it had just reduced down to the equivalent of a coffee hashish where you might as well have like broken it up and smoked it rather than than drank it. It would instantly cause stomach cramps and explosive diarrhea. But no, keep complaining about Starbucks at service pauses because that's the real battle. I hate Starbucks. I hate it. Meh. But I just wanted to let you guys know I've been doing this for a while. And uh, particularly over the past five or so years, I've been going back and forth from Boston to Utah every winter and spending the month of March in, in Utah in that vicinity. So I have, I have uh, I've developed a few long distance driving skills, which I will now convey to you in the least incoherent way possible. This will help. An 8.5% Lamplighta Rabbit Rabbit, AKA Bunny Beers, when my wife goes to the liquor store. Hey Dutch, get me some bunny beers. All right, so first off, you wanna be safe. You wanna do everything within your limitations, within your comfort zone, because when it comes to driving, it's not just, you know, it's not like a bike race or something where you can kind of push through and suffer and, you know, and then end up putting yourself in the hospital. If you screw up at driving because you've pushed too hard, you could put someone else in the hospital or kill someone. So my prime direct when it comes to driving is get from point A to point B as safely as possible and while keeping it safe for everyone else around me. I see myself as a car pilot. I don't like you because you're dangerous. That's right. Nice, man. I am dangerous. As far as safety goes, I barely speed. Uh, there's, there's various reasons for this, but I mean, there's, you get better gas mileage, you have to stop less, uh, you're less likely to get pulled over. We'll get into other time-saving techniques in a moment. So I generally set cruise control just at or a, just a slightly above the speed limit. Driving the speed limit or below the speed limit seems like you're probably trying too hard. And if I were a cop, I'd know you were doing something wrong. I'm just gonna say it probably one of the best time-saving techniques, which is far superior to speeding, is peeing in bottles. It's just something, I mean, I know it's, maybe it's not for the ladies and, and for some dudes, but that you can safely and cleanly pee in a bottle. It'll save you five to seven minutes several times per drive. Like the only stopping I wanna be doing is for gas and to make coffee. So peeing in a bottle is gonna save you way more time than speeding. You know, speeding is, is inherently unsafe. It is. You might get pulled over. And at that point, uh, any gains you might've made are blown. You're, I mean, you'd have to drive 190 miles an hour to make up for the fact that you were stopped for you know, 10 to 20 minutes. This is huge for me. When it, when it goes from, you know, kind of getting past the, the comfort zone of driving, which for me is about 10 or 12 hours, is it's like anything. Uh, it's like working out or doing anything you don't want to do. The best thing to do is get lost in the process. Just focus, you know, like I, I swim, I hate swimming. I like how I feel after, I like how it loosens up my body, I like how it makes my back feel, but I hate doing it. So I just practice my technique. I, you know, I set up intervals and I get lost in the process. And then before I know it, I'm out and I feel better. Same thing with driving. So when you get out of the car, you feel fucking awful. The key, I know, you know, especially in this day and age, uh, I mean, people are way, way into their gadgets and stuff. And I find whether, you know, whether I'm riding a bike or driving a car for a long distance, 
I want to know as little as possible. I just want to know the absolute necessary details. Like, you know, do I have gas in the car? So I have my gas gauge visible. Other than that, I cover up my clock. I look at the GPS as little as possible. Like if I'm out on I-80 or whatever, and I know I've got 700 freaking miles of Kansas or whatever it is. And, and I'm also, I'm going, you know, roughly the speed limit. I don't really need to worry about, you know, cops. I don't need to worry about speed traps. Uh, I don't need to worry about turns. So I, I just don't look at the GPS. And, you know, it's, it depends on what you're into. You know, like I, I happen to really like podcasts and audiobooks, and I have a thousand podcasts queued up, ready to go. And, you know, some of these things, you know, people ask me, oh, you listen to a three and a half hour podcast. It's like, it's pretty easy when you're on a 16 hour drive. And then, you know, kind of later in the night, I might, I might do music. I like to do calls. I like to like call everybody I know. You know, late night, you know, a few hours to go, whatever. I will start listening to, you know, more upbeat music. This is huge. It may be totally made up. But I, I once heard that the reason why truckers chew sunflower seeds and, you know, they, they'll the whole process of like you know getting the the sunflower seed out of its little shell and and all that it's very labor intensive and i heard this from a lady on youtube so it's got to be true i get all my science on youtube i heard that the last muscle in the body to go to sleep is the tongue and so if you can keep the tongue moving then you you're not going to fall asleep as quickly i don't like sunflower seeds so what i do is a thing called the karaoke that's like c-a-r hey okay i'll put up i'll queue up a bunch of stuff that i you know i feel i can sing along to well but as you see here I'm a prisoner. tell your children not to walk my way because i'm the luckiest guy i won't leave you henry the most remarkable thing about you standing in the doorway is that it's you and then you're standing in the doorway see the long I, I am quite horrible, <laughs> but it, it tends to be stuff I know the lyrics to and I like singing along to and I tend to like very deep male vocals. This is the weeping song. That's, that's what I'll do kind of last thing is I will do a lot of karaoke. Yeah, I'll kind of reiterate that again, but, but yeah, getting lost in the process, just not paying attention. I mean, it depends on what you're into. Some people love data. They love uh, gadgetry, whatever. And I mean, never mind. Like, goes without saying, I am not. I am not on my phone while I'm driving. I do have a whole video talking about how I film safely while driving, and I basically have like a dash cam set up. I just absolutely don't do it. But never mind that. I'm also just. I'm looking at as little stuff as possible. I know I got gas in the car. I know I got air in my tires. I'm good. Like, let's let's just get there. You know, you don't want it to be like a freaking remedial math class in sixth grade where you're just staring at the clock and just watching that second hand ticking by and ticking by. And tick. It's just going to make it seem longer. I mean, I know you've all been there in remedial math class. But... So sort of on safety and, uh, you know, slash driving endurance, you want to go as easy on your eyeballs as possible. So a good, good set of shades. I like Jobos. And a clean windshield, uh, especially at night, having a, you know, making sure the inside of your windshield is clean, making sure you have windshield wiper fluid. I mean, this is like kind of no brainers, but this stuff is going to be visually exhausting. You know, another thing I saw in a science video on YouTube was that most of your brain activity is focused on input from your eyeballs. So just by closing your eyes, which you shouldn't do while driving, you relax your brain incredibly. So making things easier on your eyes is definitely going to help you out. Yeah, and of course, like I am someone, I, I utilize caffeine uh, to fuel these drives. And so I try to, at this point, I, I like micro dose it, but you know, I'll just kind of sip on coffee, make sure I'm also hydrating. You gotta kind of treat it like an endurance event, like like you would a, a, a long bicycle ride, is you need to be feeling good. So, you know, kind of, uh, kind of on that note, um, like, don't eat shitty food and if you're sitting in the car for 16 20 hours and your gut starts to backfire like you, it's just not where you want to be like you don't want to be taking up time you know sitting in a bathroom somewhere so just keeping it clean you know keeping it like you know smart fuel you know keeping hydrated you know drink you know i, I try to keep it a coffee uh, the last few hours of a drive sometimes i will do a sugar-free red bull it's it seems to give me like this little extra kick i pack my own food 
so I pack as much of my own food as possible. I have as many of my own snacks as possible. I try to stay away from things like chips and candy and, and sugary crap. And so it tends to be, you know, nuts and oysters. Those aren't great for eating while driving, but you can stop and eat them. They're great. I know that's not everybody's cup of tea. A cup of oyster tea. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, whatever it is, like I, I tend to just pack, you know, stuff I can kind of eat on the go, you know, fruit, bananas, uh, apples. I mean, it's all, it's all personal preference, but just eating stuff that's going to kind of keep you running smoothly and give you energy because it is, it is taking, you don't think about it, it's, it's an inordinate amount of energy being used up by this driving process, especially when you push outside of, you know, 12 hours or whatever. It is an endurance event and you got to be feeling good or less freaking horrible. So here's the thing too, when I stop at a service plaza, and I think this is the thing a lot of uh, just, you know, average Americans could benefit from, I park as far, I'm sorry, I pack as far as possible from the service plaza, sometimes a hundred yards away from the service plaza in the farthest spot and walk to the service plaza just to get those steps and get my body moving around. Another thing I'll do, if you don't care what other people think, when you stop to get gas, do some jumping jacks, do some high knees, you know, kind of move around, you know, just to get, you know, get the blood flowing, get yourself moving around. Because that is one thing. I mean, you know, they say sitting is the new cancer because sitting kills like a half million people a year and leaves families devastated. Sitting does. Why do people say shit like that? Yeah, so just to kind of reiterate, don't, I mean, don't push it. It's like everyone to their, their comfort level. Long distance driving is not a tough guy contest you want to lose because in this case, other people might lose as well. I know people push it farther than I do, but I mean, my comfort zone can go from, you know, 12 to sometimes 24 hours, but I do have a mutant power in my insomnia where I can't sleep in a bed. So there's no way in hell I'm going to fall asleep in a car. So I guess, I guess to summarize, the main things are find a way to get lost in the process, you know, keep your focus on the road, but you know, get into your, you know, audio books or calling your mother or, or whatever it is, your music, your karaoke. Well, the tears I cry for that woman are gonna flood you big river and I'm gonna sit right here until I die. And the other thing is just, just be safe, you know, keep it within your limits. This is not an area where you have something to prove. It's like either, these are kind of these are my tips. This is kind of how I've developed a system for driving, you know, kind of outside of the normal comfort zone for driving. But it's, you know, it's not for everybody. Uh, sometimes it's not for me. But, uh, and you, you got to know that, like when it's, when it's time to bag it, you got to bag it and just, and just be safe. But I think that's it. Get lost in the process and be safe. I think that's about it. Mm. Pee in bottles. And definitely learn to sing better than I do for freak's sake. Let me. And side note, I'm going to be doing this in just a couple weeks. My wife and I are moving out to Colorado City, Arizona, just out by Hurricane Utah uh, for the month of March. And so we're going to be riding all the macers out there. If you're in the vicinity, hit me up. Maybe we'll ride bikes. All right. See you later. Out of all the sky, we thought.